I did say we would do something a little different after Tokyo Red Bull, and this is it. Yeah, uh, well, I never done a revisit before, so why not revisit the manga I used as a vehicle to vent about my own problems with depression and suicide to do exactly that again, but in depth. I hope. I don't know. I read this. I, I wrote this part like <laughs> before I finished the rest of the script, obviously. So uh, we'll see. Um, anyway, I didn't really give it the live day before. Only skipping the surface and really doing it an injustice by doing so. I feel like now is a good time to tackle it since I'm back on my antidepressants. At time of writing, I should make clear, I'm probably be off of them by the time this video comes out and dealing with the aftermath of the last review and more importantly the series is finally fully translated this will be well this will serve as a great seg segue for all the people who came here because of that dumb edit I made beforehand <laughs> oh yeah sorry guys I, I don't actually make Stupid means he given the only manga reviews that act as vehicles for me to talk about things no one in my life would listen to. So, uh, sorry to disappoint you like that, but I hope you stick around. Anyway, um, welcome back to the depressing world of cleaning up after the dead, Death Sweepers. Death Sweepers is very, how do I put it, simple on paper. It's a manga about a company called Death Sweepers who cleans up after the dead. What does that mean specifically? Because the dead don't really make a mess on the account of them being dead. So, well, it's more about removing the corpse and cleaning up any damage they may have left from decomposition, and yes, that is your goal warning. You, if you don't like looking at decaying bodies and sensitive to the topic of suicide, please leave. I may put a warning at the start of the video, so this is your second warning. Like, I know there's people who get triggered by this sort of thing, that's why I advise you leave and probably watch one of my more upbeat videos. May I recommend 100 Girlfriends, which is currently the most popular review on the channel. And I think for a very good reason, too. <laughs> it's very, it's very good. In my opinion. That's just me being a disco, it's fine. Anyway, um, I find the core premise of cleaning up after dead bodies to be interesting, but easily the best part of the story is how the premise is really just a vehicle. A metaphorical one, because it's really about Hiroyuki, and how he comes to terms with the suicide of his brother. Like I said in my old video, this manga is about confronting the ugly consequences of death, how death of a loved one can leave lasting effects on those who care about them, and how to deal with that in a healthy manner. Our main protagonist is Hiroyuki, who lives so carefree before. He looked after his dropout brother and doesn't care about what he's doing. That's until his brother commits suicide by starvation and is confronted with the aftermath of his brother's actions. His mother doesn't confront the reality of the situation in a much healthier way, and I would say Hiro isn't doing that either. I mean, he rushed himself into joining a cleaning company that just cleaned up after his brother's death, and considering he was just dumped by his girlfriend on the same day, I wouldn't say he's in a mentally healthy place. He also did consider jumping off a bridge, so maybe this is more healthier, you know? Cleaning up after the dead, or killing yourself? I think I'll take a clean up after the dead. Yeah, so, really, the point in this manga is kind of like... It's really just about Hero's journey, about learning to respect his life, and how impactful death can be, and how different people deal with it, I guess. Now, before we kind of dive more into that, yeah, um... I'm just gonna say it now, I really don't like Chapter 1 Hero, like, pre-death Hero is like such a fucking gigator, and I get it, he kinda needs that tool angle just so the death is a little bit more effective on him, like, he clearly doesn't respect how precious his time on Earth is at this point. So, when his brother dies, and his brother's final words of, you must live, is a little more effective, and he starts viewing life differently at this point. Uh, 
But considering what he does in a later arc, maybe didn't exactly work out. I, I would say, though, that the first three cases he does is very indicative of his growth. And I think that is the most growth we all see of he gets over this manga. As he just kind of tries to process the whole situation around his brother's death. I also like how he gets to see all these other different reasons why these people work at Death Sweepers. Be it the spiritualist who used to be suicidal, the psychiatrist, he also used to be high on life before a story arc I don't want to talk about yet, or the owner who started the business after witnessing the devastation of an earthquake. I really like the first half of the story because of these different comedy workers give heroes new perspectives on deaths. Yeah, I can't do this anymore. Like, I, I can see here and talk about things I like about this manga, and, you know, I certainly definitely gush over that fact in the old review, which I also kind of recommend you could watch, but I kind of need to talk about why I'm not in love with this title now, especially after the epiphany I had with Tokyo Red Hood. Look, I really want to enjoy this more, and I want to talk about it. There's a lot of things I want to discuss, but I either don't feel confident talking about it, just due to how sensitive the subject of death can be, or it's just being dragged down by that second half of the story. <laughs> and that second half just really makes me not like this as much. Okay, before I continue, I'm going to get personal and kind of dark. So combat warning again. Third time, I guess, now. Also, I don't think this background is appropriate. Wait, wait, can we get, like, a background change to signify the change that's happening? Like, you know, something appropriate. Yeah, I know we don't know what to do. Just figure something out. Yeah, we could just use my bedroom. It's fine. But this looks like a mistake. <laughs> Shit. For context, when I first reviewed this, it was a very dark time for me. And I was only able to read the first 15 or so chapters at the time. Because the rest of the chapters weren't translated yet. I fell in love with that because it really spoke to me as a piece of art. As someone dealing with depression, lack of se self-worth, and extremely suicidal, this title really did speak to me. It was a reminder why I shouldn't do it. It would remind you what your death does to the ones you care about. It's heart touching. It really just speaks to you on that level. Now, flash forward to current time, I'm on my antidepressants and generally doing better for myself mentally. And now this story has no impact on me. It has lost its charm. And I can admit, I still like that first 15 chapters, but now I can't see it past anything but like melodrama. Like, I'm starting to question, what's the purpose of some of these characters? Like, like the Spiritus, why is she here? This is a realistic setting, and I'm sorry, ghosts aren't real, so why do we need this supernatural aspect? It kind of feels like she's he's she's just there, because, like, a day soap writer would, like, need it, because it's, like, fucking season 47, they need something to spice up the latest cheating scandal or some shit like that, I don't know. Not a very accurate comparison, but it's still the point is it feels very out of place. But then you compare it to the second half, where we have this sort of cult company that's all about preserving the dead and putting them on display so their loved ones can still visit them and see them the way, well, the the way they were if they're still in life. The aspect is fine, by the way. It's a very interesting comparison about how people grieve and possible religious beliefs be like. The person we see this happen to was denied a traditional funeral by my understandings for Jap Japanese funerals. So he could be preserved like this. I really like that. This contrast about how we how we treat people after death and religion type. I lost my point because I'm going off script. What I didn't like though is that I saw a duologist has ties to this company doing this, and it sort of focused more on him and his personal drama with this company, rather, and it focuses less on Kilo's personal growth as a character post-death. post, the, post death. 
And this is, like, not even, like, talking about the final arc either, but we'll get to that. Let's talk about how they dropped the ball with Hero's mother. Like, for most of the story, Hero's mum is his counterpart. If Hero was struggling to deal with his grief in a healthy way, his mother was just flat out deciding to not deal with it at all, choosing unhealthy ways to cope with the lost. She's depicted choosing alternative beliefs and outright denying the loss of her own son, pretending he's still there. In a good alternative timeline, I feel like the story would end with Hero and his mum conflicting over their grieving processes, Hero helping his mum accept the loss and finally weeping together before choosing to move on together. Unfortunately, we live in the timeline where it was sloppily finished and his mum becomes a Venji groupie before disappearing off the face of the earth so we can pivot to the company that's actually more like a cult when I reread it. <sighs> Honestly, the only thing I like about the cult stuff is the side story with one of the hero's senpais who has, you know, recently entered the, the workforce. I love how we get to see how disillusioned he is and how he has been driven to suicidal thoughts. It's very reflective of real life culture and the feelings the generation of that time was inflicted with. In fact, it still has relevance in today's society 15 years later. Some shit just never changes, I guess. Sadly, his story gets ended by him getting murdered by his lover just as he's dying to find meaning because his lover is part of this cult, which is also a doomsday cult, I think. Like, fuck, we need to talk about the cult and how it ends. Because holy shit, the cult p pisses me off. Spoilers, by the way. So the cult. I hate this. But with the ending in mind, it feels like it's always its writer's intention to end this way. Like, annoying the fact that Venji is an incest baby, and the fact that that fact was dropped at the second to last chapter, the penultimate chapter. But with how the final chapter ends with just a flat out apocalypse, which is the implication, I just presumed it was just like an earthquake again. It wasn't the end of the world. Um, it just made me pivot about how I feel about the whole series in general, but ha but can I complain? It feels like that this was the way they always intention it, intentioned to end. Like, we have the spiritual setup who predicts the world ending. We have the owner talking about a previous earthquake, and going into the second half, like, nearing the end, we do get the minor tremor that, you know, at the start of it. It feels like they always wanted to do this and just hit it really well in this really good story. Well, it was initially a good story. Um, I went from really loving this story because of that first 20 or so chapters, and then its second half has bombsing parts before it just, just dropped it, frankly, with the final arc of all these twists and our actual main character having no real relevance. It ruins what I thought was a beautiful story about grieving and death with its dumb, melodramatic shit. But to be honest though, um, I didn't really think it was that beautiful anymore. You see, the reason why I want to revisit this out sort of doing injustice, which I end up not doing, I guess, but when I first started rereading it, it just didn't click with me. For me, on this reread, it was always just melodramatic in a way with interesting aspects that weren't developed. This made me wonder why I felt like this and then I decided to do a little experiment. As I said earlier I was on antidepressants so I decided to stop taking them and revisit it once I felt like well, what I normally felt like, I guess, before I took the antidepressants. Um, I know I shouldn't have been experimenting with my own mental health, but considering I was already thinking about getting off of them beforehand, because I hate how they left me feeling, might as well try. <laughs> uh, so cut forward two weeks of no antidepressants and a rather depressing t talk of one of my exes. Um... I was feeling quite depressed again and found myself reading the story again. Guess what? It clicked again. It just clicked with me. It was like... 
I don't know how. Like, even the terrible ending seemed better to me. To me, that ending was more about how death is ultimately meaningless. We could put meaning to it all we want, but like... What we really should be doing is just not caring. Even Veiji, who is on his death pled bed, says he's finally felt calm, at peace, for the first time in his life, as Hero just goes back to being mentally fucked like at the start. It's a weird pivot, to be honest. The first half of the story feels almost pro-life with how it shows how death and suicide impacts people. And then we get to see how death is approached by the people who are about to die. It almost becomes pro-death as it reinforces this idea that death is something that should be welcomed. <sighs> that said, it wasn't as magical as the first time. The more melodramatic elements of the story still didn't agree with me and it probably didn't help that I did read a better title about this topic in well, that topic being life and death uh, by the way that manga is Far Away Paladin I recently started reading it and it's amazing I look forward to talking about it more later this year but to me Far Away Paladin well it does exactly what I wanted from Death Sweepers but far more interesting, and most importantly, doesn't drop it for whatever they do in the last arc, arc, act, arc, act, who cares, fucking move on. In the end of the day, Death Sweeper is interesting to talk about. It's a piece of fiction that really depicts how impactful death is, but kind of squanders its message with unnecessary elements, but it still kind of finds a way to speak to people like me. It also shows how our mood impacts how we enjoy certain kinds of story. Even if I didn't get off my antidepressants and read it, the final section of the script, I don't think I would have came around to the ending. Like, fuck man, I really needed to just be in the right mindset to really process what that ending was trying to say. And I don't know, maybe I did understand what it was saying, maybe I didn't. <sighs> anyway, my new PC is here. If you can't tell by the fact that I am re-recording the last two sections, because I wanted this out before the end of the year. In fact, I wanted this out before the end of Christmas. So, yeah, anyway, new PC is here, so I get to work on my next project right after this. Soon as I can bring myself the finish fee editing this video, which I will probably have out... Let's say 24 hours from now, that of me recording this. Let's see if I'm right. I'm probably not, but we'll, we'll try. We'll, we'll, it's about trying, okay? Fuck, my phone vibrated when I'm recording. <laughs> oh, I hope you don't hear that. Anyway, um, they're sweepers. I don't know how to end this. It's one o'clock in the morning, and I just want to get to editing. Bye.